Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the latest Walkabout Talk About. Uh, this week, we are talking Meow Wolf. Um, so we've got Don Carson, um, our in-house art director, and we've got Katie Kennedy. Uh, I'll let everybody introduce themselves um, as they take their first putt. So I think, Don, you, you're up first. Okay, I'm going to start. So I'm Don Carson. I am an art director here at Walkabout Mini Golf. Hey, the nice. And uh, and I'm Lucas Martel. I'm the creator of Walkabout and doing a couple different things. Mostly the uh, uh, kind of the creative director for right. Walkabout. Hey, Katie. And I'm Katie Kennedy. I'm a co-founder and creative director at Meow Wolf and the creative director of Numina in Denver that this world is based off of. And I'm really bad at golf. Okay, this is always my so. this is always my favorite because this is the one time that I get to win because I got everybody <laughs> distracted trying to talk and <laughs> um, nice. But so why don't we start off Katie um, I think that just with the the course having come out recently, I think that most people are a little bit more aware, but maybe you could just kind of give us a bit of an intro for the folks who haven't been to a Meow Wolf exhibit of just sort of like, yeah, kind of what it is and maybe kind of how it started. Um, well, a uh, Meow Wolf is, a, Meow Wolf makes mostly massive, immersive, multimedia art installations. Um, and when I say massive, I mean tens of thousands of square feet and multiple floors mm -hmm. of art installations. Um, fully immersive like this, but you know, with gravity. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, we started as an art collective and became more of like a collaborative um, company. And this is indeed a very distracting environment to try and like, I'm like, oh my God, what is Meow Wolf? <laughs> Just Meow imagine you're standing by in the actual, yeah. <laughs> well, Meow Wolf is by definition pretty hard to define. Um, it's it's an experience, it's, it's, it's an immersive experience. So it's something that you can look at videos of, you can, you can learn about, but really like going and seeing one is, um, it's kind of, has to be done to be fully understood um, but most importantly it's a it's an art experience like it's some of it is fully built worlds and uh, um, some of it is individual artist projects um, or artist projects that we've helped help them figure out how to build help them build something like they've never built before um, so where's my ball where am I oh, oh you're Kevin. you um, so that's one thing that makes us different from a lot of things is, um, you know, it's really driven by ideas come up with, that have been come up with by artists. Awesome. And um, I'm going to keep you on the, the spot here for just a little bit. What all, like, so this project came about because I think that uh, uh, Vince Cadlebeck, one of the other co-founders, had been playing and had just mentioned something on Twitter. We pinged you guys, but I'm kind of curious to hear your, like, yeah, kind of what your reaction was, like, to that initial concept of doing sort of a mini golf course set in this Meow Wolf universe. Like, yeah, what was, what were, what was that initial, uh, that initial thought? Well, we've been, like, kind of joking, kind of dreaming about building a mini golf course for. I don't know, since like 2009 at least. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a pretty, pretty funny like way to end up getting to do that. Um, kind of like, well, sounds good to us. Like, <laughs> and <laughs> Numina was really one of the worlds that made more sense than any of the others because mm -hmm. Numina is a like living being in itself it's like a curious character um so it and it exists in denver like largely to interact with us so why wouldn't it also come like 
show up in some new format where it can sort of like play with us and um, learn about us. So totally. it comes through us either to be something three dimensional. Oh, see, terrible at golf. <laughs> three dimensional or um, virtual. <laughs> it it made the decision to to <laughs> be golf, I guess. Yeah, and uh, so Don, I know that um, I think that <laughs> internally, I don't remember if it was before or even after that initial sort of like that that message from Vince, but you had even brought up the idea of like, what about Meow Wolf when we were just talking about potential courses? Um, do you remember what you were thinking? Sort of like it would it would be what it would become, or just sort of like yeah, like kind of where did that initial yeah. Yeah, where did that we were, comfort into your heads? We were we were in one of our creative retreats working on you know like six or seven new future courses, and uh, we had already started uh, Labyrinth, and we already knew that we were going to be doing um, Mist, and those particular uh, already existing, already owned uh, IPs were were very. Uh, surprising to our players and mm -hmm. we were looking for another surprise and the one thing that we had not done is to fully collaborate with other artists who were not internal to Mighty Coconut and uh, Meow Wolf seemed like just the perfect perfect bunch of folks to to sort of jump in and play together and unlike our other courses which have been uh, we take your IP and then we do our very best to create the best version of it. This gave us the opportunity to actually work, you know, hand in hand with other artists, uh, Katie specifically, uh, to to try to to recreate an existing place, but then also bring what is unique to our projects uh, in our sort of design aesthetic. But yeah, we went to House of Eternal Return. We talked to you guys a little bit. And then I think the next one was actually us in Denver together. Mm -hmm. And it was a really interesting thing being able to sort of walk through. Now, the this to me really does feel like my memory of being there. I haven't been back to Denver for probably almost a year now. Um, mm -hmm. But we'll get a chance to go there uh, pretty soon here. But it from... It feels like a very, very similar thing, but it was a really unique thing to sort of be standing in what is essentially already that 3D space, that 3D place, and sort of like, oh, how would we go about sort of turning that in into sort of a, a mini golf course? And I think that one of the things that we had really talked a lot about in that very first, um, that first sort of design session was sort of like, what makes Meow Wolf Meow Wolf, and like, what are some of the rules that sort of like? And I was really surprised by just like the uh, the the lore that you guys had sort of built. I mean, in this case specifically around Numina, um, that it wasn't necessarily apparent, but once you said it, we kind of got it. So maybe you can kind of chat through a little bit more about sort of like that deeper that deeper sort of idea of what Numina is. Um, yeah, and that's kind of common for us, where like a lot of our, of our worlds, a lot of our projects have really, really deep story, and some of it is really apparent, some of it is accessible, and some of it is really just like Easter eggs or like borderline inaccessible. <laughs> it's just like mm -hmm. part of what makes it, ma helped us make it what it became. But um, with Numina, um, the idea is that. Numina is a sixth dimensional plant universe, like a, a plant that is a universe unto itself, um, a living conscious world, not unlike ours, but a little bit more interactive uh, of mm -hmm. a consciousness, I guess, um, theoretically. Maybe not. It's hard to say. Depends on who you are and your relationship to to this world. Um, but uh, the idea is that 
Oof, it's really, it's yeah, it's really hard to try and talk about these things and aim, with, especially when you're already, <laughs> that's the that's the, the, that's this. our secret. <laughs> <laughs> Get philosophical and putt. <laughs> well, my golf isn't getting worse, but my talking is. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's also better. The I think we've all had about eight hours of meetings today, so we're all yeah, uh-huh. we're all we should have we should have done whiskey or something like anytime you score a bogey you got to do a shot that would have definitely oh my god <laughs> when we had, when we arrived we when we arrived in denver and we met you for the first time mike i have a very very vivid memory of walking into numina which had been called the swamp pretty much in all of our conversations up until that point and your introduction to the, the environment we had just walked into was oh by the way this isn't a swamp this is a sentient six-dimensional being and that was like that would kind of set the tone for the next year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but just like the, like, oh, what what little thing can I say that can like completely change your perception of- It worked. Of the space around you. So so the idea with it being a plant is that like, um, essentially the, the s- cell walls, what would be the cell walls of a plant cell are, Oops, I hit a IRL thing. Um, Oops. <laughs> what would be the cell walls of a plant cell are like the edges of this physical universe that we can walk around in, this physical like piece of Numina. And through portals, through in um, physical Numina, through mirrors um, are warped versions of like parallel universes and like all these parallel universes of Numina are all cells in the greater, greater higher consciousness being. Um, and all of the creatures that, that live here, some of them might be kind of like part of Numina, like organelles to a cell. Um, mm-hmm. Some of them might be visitors like us. Um, and some of them uh, might have been welcomed to live here, but aren't you know aren't originally from here. The I, the way of talking about it that I've uh, been using is like if a deer achieved enlightenment, it probably wouldn't make it very long in the woods here, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a sanctuary for some kind of unusual consciousnesses. Um, I think we also talked early on that that everything was unconditional, that the inhabitants as well as Numina were without judgment. Mm. Yeah, it's not like the story is not really one of conflict in any way. It's just sort of, it's just sort of being, you know? Um, Well, one of the other things that I know that we also talked about a lot in that very first sort of uh, kind of deep dive session was gameplay and sort of like how were we going to sort of make the gameplay something that also sort of echoed that felt suitably Meow Wolf. And I think that one of the things that we really kind of embraced on this course in a way that we never have before was the idea that being unexpected and constantly sort of like making something happen. It definitely feels like it might be one of the less competitive courses. Although we also made a big effort to make sure that there was still a lot going on that like people who want to actually play mini golf are still having a good time. Um, Uh But we really did try to add a lot of these mechanics in a way that would constantly be surprising you. And I remember just sort of like post-it notes on the wall of like, all of the different things that we thought we could do, a couple of things that we were like, we'd love to do it, but we're not sure. I feel like probably about 70 to 80% of those initial ideas got into here. Um, <laughs> awesome. In fact, I'm, tr- I'm trying to remember if there's any that we, uh, any particular like gameplay ideas that might've even gotten, made it onto the cutting room floor for whatever reason. Um, I think that we had some animation based ideas that were a little too much. Um, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like Numinita coming in and like taking your ball and running around with it. Um, That's right. And some and like think... gravity defying things that we were just like, it's just not necessary. <laughs> 
I do feel like we ended up simplifying a few of those things just because there was so much new going on and having already done Upside Town is like the gravity thing in particular was one. I remember that we had also, we did get it in in one place. It's at the back nine, so we won't see it here, but the hole where you putt, but your ball is actually on the ceiling. We had a cut, mm -hmm. we had more mirrored stuff, which was super cool. And I think ultimately we kind of decided that it was, once we got the multi-ball working, I think that, that was the one that we were just sort of like, that is so, it's something that I feel like we could only get away with because like we really do use it in a way that it's meant to be sort of a, it's a randomizer, but if you hit the multi-ball, there's a better chance that you're gonna get a good play off of that. And that had yeah. this really nice, like unexpected, super fun thing, but that also still had a skill shot element to it. And I think that was always the, the line that we were trying to ride was like, how do we make it still skill-based, but also just, yeah, doing something new and unexpected on pretty much almost every single hole. So, yeah. Um, speaking it's of which, just I like, think it's It's so awesome that you guys are, were like down to just be like, let's try everything. <laughs> let's mess <laughs> with, the, with the, the medium because like, you know, the question of like, how do we, how do we make something like this Meow Wolfy? Like, you know, one of the most important things that we can at least try to do is, is mess with the medium, is mm -hmm. um, be self-aware of the medium at least, um, is like make people think about it. So playing with, playing with all these different bizarre mechanics, um, is, is like such a great way to break expectation. Uh, I think we, we also we also have Numanita's attempt to communicate to us th through miniature golf, and that that conversation is constantly evolving as we go to hole to hole, as um, mm -hmm. as each hole is another opportunity for Numanita to to get. Oh look at look at me! Oh nice Ooh. shot! Oh yeah, well completely done, planned. Yeah, <laughs> not. I like that animation that just happened. That was cool. Yeah, I think the uh, that once we, I feel like once we got into it, and I don't remember at what point we had kind of said that, oh, that if if Numina is sort of reaching into all of these different worlds and pulling things that it finds interesting sort of into itself, then why wouldn't it also reach into Walkabout and basically pull the thing? So I think that once we kind of added the, like the flags everywhere and even taking some of these UI elements and turning them into physical things, it, it felt like it made it a, it, I don't know, it just created a really nice synergy for me. Um, and it also gave us a nice set of tools that we could use because the player experience is so different. And there's a lot of times where you wonder what exactly you need to do. I think that that's also something that we embraced on this course more than mm -hmm. any course that we've ever done. We've said it's okay if the if people don't know what they're supposed to do, they should just play and see what happens. Yeah. And we had never really done that before. Well, and that's such a Meow Wolf mindset of just like, just show up. Just like, try stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. See see what happens is such a, yeah, such a like core Meow Wolf idea. Mm -hmm. Well, just speaking like... of kind of core Meow Wolf ideas, we're coming up to the first instance of one of the other things because at, in the House of Eternal Return, you guys had really sort of set this idea that there was sort of like central areas, but then it was almost sort of like a hub and spoke idea that you would constantly be going into these other areas that were totally new, completely their own, almost sort of like installations. And I, I think that even this room was the one that we, in that very first meeting, we were like, we've got to introduce something along the idea of flex rooms or what you call them. We yeah. got to find a way to introduce this in a way that feels walkabouty, but is also like we we've never done this before, and we're not constrained by physical reality, so we can do these teleporters that essentially warp you into a totally new space. Um, but I yeah, I think that it was pretty much that very first meeting when we said like, what if you go, you know, you do the classic mini golf thing where you put into the mouth, but then instead of coming out the other side, you have to go into the stomach of this thing, and 
play play through basically and then i think that you had yeah. added the, the idea of like oh maybe there's a bunch of other creatures in here playing cards or something that's <laughs> yeah like they do mm-hmm. like of course they, they do, do. Mm-hmm. um yeah the the idea of flex rooms is um is an essential part of of collaboration for us really it's like we learned very very early in um collaborating on installation that it's a lot easier to work together and like make compromises if you have some space to make something that's really just your own as Mm -hmm, well. mm -hmm. Um, So we started breaking our exhibits into little pockets or lots and lots of different little rooms. Um, And um, we it's it's an essential part of our of our process now and it's one of the main ways that we get to work with lots of local artists from wherever whatever city that we're in oh darn oh well we could stand here longer um <laughs> well don's gonna go out, is so. is to give them um <laughs> give them spaces of their own to design and make so um with with vr and with walkabout it's like well the local artists are you guys and the artists that work for walkabout so the question was, um, you know, this one kind of we came up with collaboratively, but with the other, with the other two, it's like, well, what do your artists want to do that they don't normally get to do? Because that's a big mm-hmm. part of the Meow Wolf thing too. Is like, it's really hard to get immersive, <laughs> to get paid to do immersive artwork. It's really mm-hmm. hard. Um, so having that opportunity to um, have even just a gig making something that normally no one would pay you to do um yeah. similarly like all right walkabout artists what do you want to make like if you could make your own little room and it doesn't have to be a whole world and you don't have to solve for everything mm-hmm. what do you want to make well i think one of the other big things that i remember as we were thinking about those about the other the flex, each of the flex rooms that we did we really wanted it each of them to be as different from each other as possible yeah. but then also because you do spend so much of this of the course sort of in this swamp it was just a really nice way to be able to sort of break out of that and get something totally new and kind of like almost a palate cleanser so that when you come back in like it, it you just kind of see it from a whole whole new yeah. angle which um, is something that we definitely employ at meow Wolf too is like just you know, working with contrast, contrast and harmony to be, you know, to, to use the, use your psychological experience to yeah, mm-hmm. make you look at it, look at a room differently when you come in a different door like that. Um, but it's also important just sort of like narratively to um, make them really different so that it was clear that you're somewhere else now. That you're not yeah. just in a pocket of Numina, but that you've you've traveled through a portal. Totally, yeah. The um, just that difference of uh, there we go. There's a good example nice. of like yeah. The I still didn't make it in, but eh, I had a better shot. Um, uh, we're also coming up to we had played through the underside earlier, but I think. We grabbed a lot of, it helped a lot that we, while it was super fun to have the flex rooms and that ability to do a couple of holes that were truly unique in our own, I think it also really helped that we did base this off of an actual, you know, off of an actual exhibit. And the fact that most of the characters, pretty much except for the the character that we just put it through the mouth of, I think all of these come from the actual Meow Wolf, from from yeah. Numina, basically. Yeah, they do. It's it's sort of what made the collaboration possible for us without mm-hmm. having a whole ton of us working on the project, because essentially a whole ton of us already worked on the project. Like yeah. all of the work of. Uh, be it like ahead of time design work where you're like drawing out what you want to do or Mm -hmm. the design work that happens while you're building like which happened with a lot of the creatures and a lot of the plants Um, that you know people got to have essentially years of work go into Mm -hmm. this like hundreds of people put (laughs) years of work into this 
that um, you all were able to just sort of like mine all of the best stuff out of um, without having to engage our entire team to design a whole bunch of stuff. I, I remember now even that reminds me that one of the things that I think that we even struggled with a little bit um, was a, to me a big part of the of Meow Wolf is also the fact that it is something that it's made to be physical. And so I think we even talked about like, oh, like railings or some of those just like basic safety requirements that ultimately we ended up tossing. But I do remember one of the first times I stepped in here is I had a bit of a hard time mentally wrapping my head around stuff because when you look at it, you don't have a sense of like human scale. There's pretty much nothing in here that you've ever seen before. Um, and it, it, I think seeing it in video or seeing it in stills definitely it's it's difficult to really convey what it feels like to be standing in the space. But um, yeah, I don't know, Katie, what was it? What was it like for you to sort of like work without the usual sort of, you know, OSHA safety regulation requirements? <laughs> I mean, there are definitely some things that were a huge relief, like um, even just like the sheer height of this space, you know, is wildly impractical. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, we have to have floors, sadly. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of what's going on in here would just be impossible or like financially impossible. <laughs> yeah. Um, so having the freedom to build without gravity, to build um, with sort of like the scale being up to us to not have to have exit signs or... Um, light fixtures like all of that is is really awesome and at the same time you know this it has its own limitations and limitations aren't bad like that's it if we didn't have any limitations then um god like what would we even make like there's a, a, a blank page can actually be kind of overwhelming mm -hmm. so having having a tool set to work within and kind of give the viewer after a few moments of, of like figuring out sort of what to expect. It also gives us the opportunity to break their expectations. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the limitations in here of like poly count and um, you know, we didn't get to have animation in real Numina or not very much, but like, you know, trying to figure out how much animation can be in here, like how, the the it's just a different set of design constraints mm -hmm. um, that were really fun to put Numina through just that whole new lens. Yeah, and so, something that we were utterly terrified of coming into this was of what you coined as snake as uh, cat skin, which is yeah. the the Rudy. I'm still terrified of it, but <laughs> yeah, it's it, and I have to I have to shout out to uh, Emma Mercado. Uh, one of our artists, yeah. uh, her collaboration and her dedication and her countless hours in Gravity Sketch making this work um, to fulfill your expectations and vision of what the surfaces would do, but then translating it into something that is will run on a Quest headset. <laughs> Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. It's really a marvel. I, we I almost can't believe we did it, <laughs> but we did. <laughs> um, and by the yeah, way, let me just mention the, what we're job. what we're calling the cat skin is the sort of like is basically the walls that it kind of looks like the wrinkle the wrinkles of cat skin, but the way that it flows and sort of like creates portals and holes and everything is a yeah, it's a very difficult thing. Sorry, I didn't mean to step on your toes, but uh, I realized that that might not be something that people know what we're talking about. It's true. So, th so the reason it's called cat skin, it's actually something. It's a term from. Um, building the walls in Numina, um, sorry, in uh, physical Numina, uh, the best reference photos I could find were of, um, like some, there were some really good ones of sort of like saltwater taffy being stretched. And there mm -hmm. were some good sort of like tree ones, especially strangler figs and banyan trees. But the my favorite imagery that I found was uh, hairless cats like wrinkly, oh. especially like chubby hairless cats. <laughs> that sort of like smooth parts and then wrinkly parts. So, um, you know, using, I, I like cut out pick pieces of 
photos of hairless cat wrinkles and like pasted digitally pasted them on the on the designs to be like here's where the how the lines would like flow around the doorways and the different bits and pieces so cat skin sounds gross but it's not I, it's not supposed to be gross <laughs> um it's just that it's not really a tree it's not growing like a tree it's growing like something it's growing like an amalgam of um animal and plant and um mineral sort of things all at once but yeah to, to just like double down don on shouting out emma like it's incredible it was really cool to be able to collaborate to, like to have a medium where it wouldn't have to just explain it but i could like build a piece and be like this is kind of what i mean or she could show me something and I, I could just like you know adjust it a tiny bit but i didn't really even need to like emma really got it right away mm -hmm. which i'd say yeah, is pretty much true of everything we did she just got it right away <laughs> she's mm -hmm. amazing well and it was so great Thanks. that she uh so this wasn't on the initial trip but she had taken a trip out to denver as we realized that she was going to be one of the ones who was really going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting in this course um she got a chance to meet you out in denver and spend a couple of days mm -hmm. and i got really really helped to see the space and just be in it and sort of like yeah um even the not just the cat skin but also how you guys did the set decking with almost i i don't know what the best way of uh of describing but like this is not typically how we do a lot of our our set decking but it's something that she picked up on that is very numina in terms of how you have almost these like tendrils of like vines as opposed to just more like clumpy clusters of stuff and there's a little bit of that mm -hmm. but it really uh i know even as we were playing around with it it wasn't until she did that that it really started to feel like oh this is now it's starting to feel like what i remember seeing at the actual exhibit and I hadn't even yeah. picked up on that. I think at the end of the day, this is still, this is ironically one of the smallest courses that we've ever done, but it's <laughs> so dense that I still can get lost in here. Um, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go over to hole 12. I still can't find hole, hole not hole 12, hole 11. Every time I fly around, I try to get to <laughs> hole 11. I've got to like hunt and peck for it a little bit. So <laughs> it's so like beautifully disorienting. Awesome. <laughs> Beautifully yeah. disorienting. There's the name Which of this is... documentary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, that's also the kind of like uh, the real life exhibit though too. That's something that we wanted to capture yeah. because you, it's, it, was that something that you guys intended was for people to kind of lose their way or did oh, that just happen? Yeah. Absolutely. It's, you know, there, there's, there's lots of um, psychology to the design of space of like getting people to explore versus mm -hmm. like stand around and like getting people to um, dwell, to linger in a space. Um, there, there are places that kind of make you want to run in order to try and get to somewhere else, but there are also places mm -hmm. where you genuinely can't tell how to get to a place that you can see. Um, yeah, get so, back to it. Yeah, wanting people <laughs> to get lost and like feel safely lost, like they have no idea where they are and it's okay is mm -hmm. um, a really important part of the experience. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you explore enough and you start to get your bearings and you kind of, you feel proud of yourself for like yeah. figuring this space out. Um, but then even if you have kind of managed to get everywhere, the likelihood that it feels like you haven't gotten to see everything yet, or you can't even remember <laughs> a quarter of the things, you know, it gives it a sense of being larger than it is. Um, mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. I think I think works in this room too. This yeah. room, sure. But this this version of Numina, I think feels larger than it is just because you can't keep track of, of it in your head. Yeah, yeah, totally. And there's a few things that you can put like, you the cosmohedron that we're standing on, the rainbow bridge, there's certain characters, but you kind of like latch on to very specific sort of like, um, yeah, very specific sort of like road markers. And, but it can be difficult, just like the real Numina to actually find them again. So, well, awesome. Yeah. Well, I know we gotta, we gotta let you go, but, um, but thank you, Katie and Don for, yeah, taking some time to just play around and uh, thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.